Hello everybody and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure to like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So we did the Senate election prediction a couple of days ago and today we are going to be doing the governor's prediction. It is the beginning of the month. It is the prediction blitz and I'm hoping next month or maybe the month after we can start doing our 2022 house predictions. I'm sure the first house prediction is going to do very well because uh, a lot of people are waiting for that one. So we already had two of the elections that took place on this map in 2021. Republicans surprisingly flipped Virginia in epic fashion, almost flipped New Jersey out of nowhere, despite a lot of the polling showing Murphy up by like 10. So Republicans are on a roll. They're even, you know, being competitive in Biden plus 10, Biden plus 15 states because Biden is just that unpopular as we speak. So we're going to fill out this map. We're going to analyze all 36 gubernatorial races, some at length more so than others. But first, I have to tell you guys about RedEaglePolitics.com because I dropped another video today, a bonus video this week just for you guys about the one-year anniversary of You Know What Happened and the state of the GOP because of it and analyzing the event and the media fallout. That's on there. It's about 12 minutes long. It's a full-length video. We also have videos on the 2020 election. We have a video on redistricting on there as well. So make sure you guys sign up at RedEaglePolitics.com. It's just 16 cents a day for most of the exclusive content. And you get to join the Red Eagle Politics Discord server, which has roughly 100 members. We have a community. So if you want to join and be a part of the community, a part of the team, RedEaglePolitics.com, sign up today. So we're going to get into the prediction. But first, I have to tell you guys about my good friends over at Noble Gold. So it's a new year, but not much has changed. Houses are selling in a week, interest rates are zero, but our government is still borrowing, I mean, uh, printing money, five trillion in new money to be exact. So what's gonna go wrong, right? But uh, we know that consumer confidence hit a 10 year low, inflation hit 6.8%, parts of the US it's at 8%. So something is not adding up with all this conflicting data. So what can you do? You can play it safe, put some of your assets into precious metals, and it will keep your money away from the volatility of the markets and inflation and let you sleep at night. This month, Noble Gold is giving away a free 10th ounce solid gold American Eagle coin, this coin right here, with any qualifying plan you start. So talk to an expert at Noble Gold, and they'll run through the options for keeping your money safe. No pressure, no hassle, no call centers, just a chance to speak with somebody who knows what they're talking about for once. So how refreshing would that be? You can call Noble Gold at 877-646-5347 or visit their website at noblegoldinvestments.com. Again, that is noblegoldinvestments.com. So here we go, 36 states. Now we're going to fill out the safe states first. We're going to start off with the safe. We'll start off with the safe blue states like I believe we did last video. California, uh, Illinois, all these states, uh, New York as well, I mean, could get a little bit closer, could be likely in some of these if there's a really strong Republican candidate that outperforms expectations. Uh, Massachusetts, Baker's retiring, that's probably going to be safe. Same thing with Maryland, Hogan is going to be retiring. Uh, that will likely be safe Democrat as well. And the state of Hawaii, I believe we could put that in there. Now we could fill out the safe Republican states, Idaho, where there's an important primary going on, Wyoming, uh, South Dakota. No one will likely get primaried, but I don't know if that's going to be successful because now she's actually being pushed to the right a little bit. She's signing the bills she was afraid to sign before. So that might be enough. Sadly, I'd like to see her primaried out of there. Nebraska, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Tennessee, Alabama, Ivy might get ousted in that primary, as well as South Carolina. Florida, Ron DeSantis, he's probably going to be headed for something around a 10-point win. Same thing with Texas, no matter who it is. Again, there's another primary challenger. So many grassroots challengers, so much energy, and you love to see it. You absolutely do. Alaska, the governor there, Trump w was considering primarying him if he didn't accept his proposition to support the challenger to Murkowski. Guess what? He supported the challenger to Murkowski because of Trump's influence. Genius decision on the part of Donald Trump in that state. Vermont, 
as well as New Hampshire, because Sununu and Scott, they're going to be running again. So those states are going to be safe Republican. So 22 to 12, we have 16 states left to analyze here. Um, Oregon, probably going to win by around 10. We'll put that one as likely Democrat, but it's it could even be solid at the end of the day. Uh, Connecticut and Rhode Island, similar things here. Incumbents who are not super popular, but states that even with the turn to the right in the national environment, they might get saved. But I wouldn't be shocked if there's like one instance, like maybe Connecticut does flip, maybe Rhode Island flips, because we we almost saw stuff like that in 2018 and 2014. And it might happen again, because midterm years are midterm years and statewide elections are not national elections. Uh, Colorado as well, I'm going to put in the likely Democrat column. Now we'll do the likely Republican column. Ohio, because I don't know what's going to happen there with DeWine. If DeWine wins the nomination, I think he would win the general, but the coalition would be very different than the coalition if Renacy, which I hope wins the nomination, wins the nomination. So Iowa as well, we'll put that one. That one might even just be safe because of the way the national environment is moving. So 24 to 16. Kansas. Kansas, I'm going to put as likely red as well. This one should be a flip, if not safe, Republican statewide official, popular statewide official running against Democrat who wins off a fluke because of a blue wave year, a strong third party, etc. A lot of outside factors influencing that race, helping it go Democrat that time. Republicans should flip it back. And I also believe that they will flip back Tony Evers' seat in Wisconsin to Republican as well based off of the national environment and the fact that Wisconsin being blue for so long, even though it's like got an electorate that's 86% white, mostly rural compared to a lot of other states, this state is shifting to the right. There's a lot of room to grow. Republicans are going to capitalize on that in the midterms this year. So Wisconsin is going to go red probably by seven points at the gubernatorial and the senatorial level as well. So 26 to 16. All right. Uh, Now we're also going to fill out Arizona. This is another state I believe is going to be lean to likely Republican. A lot of people will hate me for saying this, but I'm finishing up a script for my Arizona documentary that will discuss the Senate race, that will discuss the governor's race, that will defend Carrie Lake from the wild uh, allegations that say she's not electable. Guess what? The people are wrong. She's going to probably win by around five plus points at this rate, partially because she's a great candidate, brings a lot of substance to the table, is very uh, talented rhetorically, and partially because Katie Hobbs is just a downright awful candidate, and she's probably got the Democratic nomination already locked up, and it's going to be a year that's going to be like R plus five is what I'm still going with. We got the generic ballot down to the you know near decimal in 2020. I'm confident with what I believe is going to happen in 2022. I've been unwavering at R plus five, unless Biden somehow gets even more unpopular, then we could talk about R plus six, R plus seven, etc. So 27 to 16. Uh, let's fill out these states remaining. Maine, Maine's going to go down the wire. Personally, Paul LePage could make it close. He really could. Polls have actually showed this. The first two times he won, he won because it was a fluke. You know, strong third party challenger. He wasn't popular. But Janet Mills is tanking in popularity. She might get by, but it's going to be extremely close. Trust me. Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro against Lou Barletta, most likely. Barletta, we talked about in 2018, he was dealt a bad hand in the wrong place at the wrong time with the Senate race. He's running a much better campaign this time around when it comes to the gubernatorial election. Personally, I believe that he will win in Pennsylvania. He's probably going to win the nomination as well. Trump endorsed him once before. He'll probably endorse him again. Shapiro like barely hung on in 2020 against a no-name underfunded candidate as well. Not a lot of people are talking about it, but it is so true. So 28-17, five left to go. Georgia, Georgia, a lot of the state's vote is concentrated in the Atlanta suburbs. You have to do just barely better than Trump did there in the 2020 election in order to win the state. Uh, Based off of the national environment swing, I believe Herschel Walker is going to win. I believe that David Perdue uh, will likely win the primary at this rate if it continues, if the anti-Kemp energy continues. And I believe that if he does win, he will win the election. If Brian Kemp wins, maybe not. I think that with... uh, 
Abrams is the opposition. A lot of Republicans are going to turn out for the Republican, but you know Trump is hell bent on maybe even sabotaging that one. So you don't know. It could actually get interesting in Georgia. I'm all for the chaos, but uh, Michigan, Whitmer, uh, Whitmer is definitely <laughs> she's definitely on her way out. I will say that uh, popularity peaked in 2020 when you had a a decent amount of people decide against their own personal freedom for whatever reason, mainly in the suburbs, and a lot of that energy is even shifting in those places. Whitmer going up against somebody like Craig or whoever uh, the Republican nominee is going to be, probably Craig. I believe Craig is probably going to end up winning by a couple of points or so. He'll do much better than Trump in Oakland County, Macomb County, and West Michigan. The rural areas will likely turn out for him as well because of the anti-Whitmer, anti-lockdown energy, and that will put Michigan in the Republican column. Minnesota. Oh, what a train wreck of a state this is, Minnesota. So sad to see. You would think that this state would be solidly Republican because, oh, there's a you know sizable rural population. You have population in the small metros, but apparently not because... The Minneapolis suburbs are just super far left for whatever reason. They were burned to the ground, and uh, instead of, like, turning right, as you would think that they would, you know, how Kenosha did, they took a large swerve to the left because a lot of the people in the suburbs, they supported the BLM debunked narratives, but Hennepin County controls a large portion of the state. In fact, if you look at this, Biden's entire margin of victory in the state pretty much came from Hennepin County, actually more than that did. Uh, so you're going to have to do better in the suburbs to offset it, but you have counties like Washington County, which you need to flip. Like, you will have to do a lot better in the outer part of the state uh, to win this state. And you might say, well, uh, Tim Walls, even though he's like, you know, relatively popular in this area, Scott Jensen will do better. But Scott Jensen doesn't energize voters that well. And even if he may, you know, make the state more competitive than it was in 2020, He's probably his best case scenario is like a Trump 2016 uh, margin loss in the state. So we're going to put that one as lean Democrat. New Mexico, Ron Chetty. Let's uh, go over to the Senate election because his election, Democrats were so hell bent on the fact that Susan Collins was going to lose by like five to 10 points and she won by 10. And that margin, Maine, was actually wider than the margin of, of Ron Chetty's loss in New Mexico. He only fell short by roughly five or six points, and a lot of resources could have been put into that Senate race that were not put into that Senate race that got put into places like Maine and Iowa and even like South Carolina because Republicans are f stupid, for lack of a better term. Uh, Ron Chetty, likely this time around going up against a governor like Grisham, who is very divisive and not very popular. Ron Chetty is good on the issues for the most part, but he's not very divisive. He was a popular weatherman. You're going to see a similar effect to Kerry Lake as well in Arizona. The popular news personality running for governor and, and capitalizing off that fact and winning in a state that has a political environment that you would originally say is unfavorable to that type of candidate. So 31 to 18. Last one is Nevada. Sisolak, sorry, you got to go down. Uh, you're likely going to see Joe Lombardo go up against him. Lombardo, the sheriff of Clark County, he was elected in Clark County, countywide, and that is where the population is in the state of Nevada, if you want to look at a map. And he has been tough on several issues. Some people will criticize him here and there, but compared to him and Dean Heller, Dean Heller has to go down because that guy is just awful. He'll be worse than Brian Kemp if he gets elected, and you just have to narrow that margin in Clark County from the narrowed, already narrowed margin of like nine points down to like six and you flip the state because that's where the population is concentrated and you have the Reed machine that's gone bye-bye essentially and the party's been taken over by crazy people. So Republicans are making gains in a state that you ordinarily wouldn't think they would. It's going to be the new Florida. It really will be. You'll see a state that was competitive except Nevada leaned more to the left than Florida traditionally did that will slowly move to the right because the Nevada Democratic Party, just like the Florida Democratic Party, is going to be one of the weakest in the nation, if not even weaker pretty soon. So this is the map, 32 to 18. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Please like this video down below. Comment down below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are in the description down below. Join the website, redigopolitics.com. 
you will get all those exclusive benefits. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.